Welcome back, Aluxers. Being 2020 and all, you've probably heard the words uncertain times being used quite a lot. And it's true that uncertain times bring risks for investing. But when it comes to investing, as with all kinds of things, with risk comes opportunity too. Aluxers, let's be clear here. We're not advising you on which stocks to buy or even which sectors to invest in. And we want to remind you that with any investment, it involves risk. What we're encouraging you to do is to do your own research. What we are saying is, whether you invest in them or not, these are some markets that are definitely worth keeping an eye on. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. So let's get to it and look at 15 markets every Aluxer should be watching. Number one, crypto. You've probably noticed it's getting mentioned more and more. No prizes for guessing what it means. Yep, it's getting bigger and bigger. Just looking at the price of Bitcoin over the past decade, true, it crashed in late 2017, but it's come back up a lot since then, even if not all the way back up to where it was. And if it ends up replacing national currencies as the main way to do transactions, as a lot of people predict it will, then it's only going to go upwards. When you're deciding which crypto to invest in, Bitcoin has a few advantages, especially if you're new to investing. First, it's more liquid than any other crypto. That means Means it's easier to buy and sell. Secondly, it's being used more and more for transactions and is becoming more widely accepted, which means demand is likely to stay high. And third, yes, it's volatile. Remember the crash in 2017, but less volatile than other crypto. Ethereum and Litecoin are also well established, but not as well as Bitcoin. And keep in mind, there are another 4,000 cryptocurrencies to choose from. Advantages of the other ones? Well, they haven't exploded like Bitcoin has. That means if you manage to pick up one that does explode, you're looking at huge gains. Of course, which crypto does that is the billion dollar question, literally. Number two, pharma. The pharma market always has huge potential for gains, and as we're in the middle of a pandemic, that means we should be keeping our eyes even closer on it. Just look at earlier this month when Pfizer and BioNTech announced they'd come up with a workable vaccine for COVID-19. It sent ripples across the whole stock market, and their own stock upwards. Interesting to note, it wasn't just Pfizer and BioNTech that did well out of this. Other pharma stocks went up too, including rival vaccine maker Moderna, another biotech company focused on making vaccines and definitely one to watch. Let's remember that even with a vaccine now on the market, nobody knows exactly where the COVID story is going to go from here when it comes to the health of the world or what we're focused on here and even the pharma market. But it's fair to say that in the coming months, there'll be a lot of action and investing in the right pharma stocks could pay off very nicely. Number three, clean energy. The world is slowly but surely switching from fossil fuels to renewable energy. This switch is going to take trillions of dollars and a few decades. Investors who choose wisely have chances to make some big profits. According to industry insiders, solar power will be at the forefront. Onshore wind is predicted to take second place and hydropower and offshore wind behind them. Some of the biggest publicly traded companies in this sector are Brookfield Renewable Partners, who operate in all kinds of renewables and are headquartered in Toronto, Canada, and First Solar, based in Arizona, one of the world's leaders in thin film solar panels. Number four, energy storage. This sector is also leading the charge against fossil fuels, but still it's considered a separate market from renewable energy. But what it has in common is a lot of potential for investors. That's thanks to the growing demand for long cycle batteries for electric vehicles and smaller batteries for electronic devices. And the real star of this sector is Tesla. Yes, they're in the automotive sector too, but what makes them really stand out from the crowd is their battery technology, and Tesla does look like a good prospect for investing in. Of course, if you'd invested in them 10 years ago or even two years ago, that would have been even better. And if you're ambitious, you might want to try and pick out the sector's next Tesla. Of course, doing that is far from easy. Number five, online platforms. 
In this group, we're including social networking, Facebook and Twitter, and e-commerce like Amazon and Alibaba. Share prices for all of these ones we mentioned shot up this year because we've been using them more and more. And there's no reason to think this trend is going to stop anytime soon, which makes them another attractive market to invest in. Others to look into include Trade Desk, a leader in advertising programming, and Shopify, which has been going up and up since 2015 and is even looking at giving Amazon a run for its money. Aside from Shopify having potential as an investment, it's been especially useful for small and medium-sized businesses. In fact, we've partnered with them for years and we can highly recommend them for any kind of e-commerce business you're thinking of starting up online. If you're thinking of setting up your own business online, why not click on the link and see what they have to offer? Number 6. Silver and Gold Time to take a quick break from investing in companies and get to grips with another market, one that's especially interesting in times of uncertainty, commodities. More specifically, precious metals. There's more to them than just bling. Investors with diversified portfolios very often have some of their money into metals like silver and gold. That's because they're considered safe havens in times of financial uncertainty, which means that when their shares go down, the price of silver and gold goes up. And the reason for this is the big institutional investors. That means mutual funds and insurance companies who drive a lot of the market. Whenever there's a risk of recession or war, they move their holdings from stocks that are considered unsafe. That means most shares and then invest them in safe havens, anything that's been proven to hold its value over time. And two of the biggest safe havens are silver and gold. In other words, when the stock market does poorly, the price of silver and gold go up. But just keep in mind the opposite is true as well. Number 7. Platinum and Palladium Silver and gold aren't the only precious metals to invest in. Lesser known ones you might want to consider are platinum and palladium. They're sometimes used in high-end jewelry. You'll find Hermes handbags containing both of them. And they're also high in demand for electronics, medical equipment, dentistry, and the auto industry. Investors should know they're also considered safe havens, and they're more rare than silver and gold and more valuable. Their prices are also very volatile, which makes them less common as a choice for a safe haven instead of silver or gold. Number 8. Real Estate Anyone who wants to consider themselves financially literate should have an eye on the real estate market. That's for all kinds of reasons. This includes if you're looking to buy or sell a home, as well as looking for investment properties. In 2020, it's been an interesting one to watch. Unlike the 2008 crisis when property markets crashed, real estate is actually doing really well right now. In many countries, prices are going up. That's partly down to the nature of the pandemic. It's made people want to own the house they live in and increasing work from. And it's also down to interest rates being low. That's good news if you're taking on a mortgage. Now what if you're eager to invest on the real estate market but don't have the cash to buy a property? Did you know about REITs or Real Estate Investment Trusts? They're companies that you can invest in that own, manage, or finance real estate to generate an income. Kind of like mutual funds that make their money from real estate, and that means you can invest in the real estate market without having to buy a property in full. Number 9. Airlines You don't need to have your eyes glued to the financial news to know that airlines have done poorly in 2020, and they're not expected to recover for a few years. But sooner or later, they're almost bound to make a comeback. That makes them potential for what's known as a recovery stock. In other words, a stock you buy when it's low and expected to make a comeback at some point later on. And airlines are one market investors with long-term horizons have their eyes on. Number 10. Hospitality Another industry we all know has been hit hard by the pandemic, hotels. But they do show signs of being quicker to rebound than airlines. And if you're on the lookout for recovery stocks, this could be one of them. But keep in mind, if you're looking for a quicker return than an investment in airlines, don't expect it to come that soon. Recently, Morgan Stanley made a list of stocks to look out for, which included several hotels it points to as recovery stocks. They included Marriott International, Hilton Worldwide, and Las Vegas Sands. Number 11. Automotive 
the auto industry is huge and very visible. In other words, we can all rattle off a list of car brands, and the fact it's visible means it always gets attention from investors. Like a lot of shares, automakers crashed early in the year, but many of them have been making a steady comeback ever since, and some are saying they're likely to keep up in that direction. Now, some safer ones to go for could be the bigger names like Ford, Fiat, Chrysler, and Volkswagen, and General Motors, which Morgan Stanley lists as a potential recovery stock of 2020. And yes, let's give Tesla another mention. It belongs to this industry as well as batteries. Number 12. Marijuana Around the world and even inside the USA, the legality of using marijuana varies quite a bit. It depends on whether it's for medicinal use or just for getting high. But wherever you're from, it's totally legal to buy publicly traded stocks in legal marijuana companies. For a while now, it's been hyped as one of the biggest investment opportunities around, like tech stocks in the 90s. The thinking behind this is that the world is going in the direction of decriminalizing and legalizing for medicinal and recreational purposes, and there's plenty of potential for share prices to get higher and higher. No pun intended. O okay, maybe it was a little intended. But a word of warning, it's a young market, which is unpredictable and very volatile. That means that despite all the hype, it's easy to lose money here. Most of the biggest marijuana companies are based in Canada, known for their liberal attitude toward marijuana, and include names like Aurora Cannabis and Canopy Growth. Number 13 software as a service. In case you're not sure what this is, it means a cloud-based service that you can access as an app or on an internet browser. Instead of having to download the software onto your PC or laptop, it makes it more accessible, more compatible, and saves you memory on your devices. There are some pretty big advantages, which people have been picking up on recently, so no wonder it's such a big growth area. Even if it's your first time hearing the term SaaS, you'll know some of the companies behind the sector, and some of the big names also present opportunities for investment right now. Among them, there's Microsoft. If you use Microsoft Teams, that's an example of SaaS, as are Skype, Slack, and Adobe. Number 14. Fintech this is a huge growth sector. The Ant Financial IPO, which was supposed to happen early in November, would have been the biggest in history. We don't know what's going to happen with Ant Financial right now, but it illustrates what a growth sector it is. Other fintechs that look attractive at the moment include Square and PayPal. If you're new to the world of fintech, especially if you've heard the word being used a lot but are still a bit foggy about what it means, be sure to check out our video, 15 Things You Didn't Know About Fintech. Number 15. Slow Growth Stocks So the one we've left for last is basically the boring, unsexy ones. Stocks that don't involve groundbreaking technologies, new consumer trends, or anything glamorous. They're also stocks you don't expect to grow loads, hence the name. They could be utilities, utilities that don't involve 5G or renewable energies, like water supply or everyday manufactured consumer products, retail, food and drink, or clothes that aren't high fashion. We can already hear you asking, but Alux, if they're slow growth, why would we want to invest in them? Well, the answer is simple. They have one bonus that fast growing stocks don't. They pay good dividends. Because they're stable industries that aren't growing much, they don't have to invest their earnings in research or scaling up production equipment. Instead, they can attract investors with a steady flow of dividends payable to shareholders. And the second plus point is, of course, the fact they're stable. So Aluxers, which of these do you think is the most exciting opportunity for investment? Let us know in the comments. And since you've been watching with us all the way to the end, we do have a bonus for you. Maybe you've been thinking, if only I had insider information, the knowledge to spot the next Apple, the next Amazon, or the next Facebook. Well, maybe you have a bit more insider knowledge than you think. Think about all the sectors you have personal experience in, through your work or maybe through hobbies or free time activities. Are there any up and coming companies whose products or services you use that you and other people are raving about? Ones that provide excellent products or fill a gap in the market in an exciting way? 
If you can think of one, it could be worth looking into. Your personal experience of that sector through using their product or working in it will give you an edge on investors who don't have that experience. And true, it's not that likely they'll become as big as Apple, Amazon, or Facebook. Let's face it, not many companies do. But if they're as good as you think, that means they could have potential to grow, and you might want to at least look into investing in them. We hope you found this video useful, Aluxers, and enjoyed it too. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more quality content every day.